Hey everybody, today we're talking about the best Linux operating system to use today if you're using Windows right now. And that is, you can guess from over here, right? Right here, Zorin OS. And you'll notice from this little icon here that I don't even have Zorin installed right now. You might be thinking, well, how is that possible? How can you use an operating system without it being installed? Zorin OS has a very cool feature. Like many other operating systems, it's actually running on a live OS, which means you go and plug a USB into a, some random laptop, you can actually go and load this into the memory of that desktop or laptop, and you can actually run the system without installing it. So if you want to do something like try Zorin OS without having to feel like you need to commit to a whole installer, you can go ahead and do that, and it's really convenient. Now, before you panic, I'm not going to bust out the terminal. Okay, maybe I will, but what we'll do is we'll just do something fun on it, right? We're just going to bring up our little terminal parrot here, and we're going to call this dude Larry, and this guy's going to come with us on this journey while I take you through a tour of Zorin OS. So now, what's the point of Zorin OS? Now, Zorin OS is to give you that good feel like Larry over here, that you're coming from something familiar that you're used to using your start menu being down here, your applications all being here, your system tray being here, and all your settings being over here. And I'm particularly interested in this setting over here. You can see it says dark mode. I'm gonna click this, you're gonna see a pretty cool little effect. Now, I don't know how they did this, but that is pretty fancy. So I gotta give them props for that. So now, but one thing that's quite interesting about Zorin is it's quite customizable. The first menu we're going to go to is the Zorin appearance. And you can see we've got a few layouts here. We're using the standard layout here with this taskbar here. We can also make that a little bit thinner here and more compact if that's what you prefer. There's also this layout here which has this button here which will actually show you the applications. And if you click on this one over here, it'll be the Activities Overview, which gives you this menu over here. And if you hit the Super Windows key once, it'll give you the Activities Overview. But if you hit it two times really fast, you'll get to your applications. You can also hit this, uh, this layout over here. And if you hit this button over here, you're going to the Activities Overview. And hit this one, you're going to the Applications. And that same shortcut that we talked about before, works on both of these layouts. We'll go back to the standard layout, but you'll notice here at the bottom, there's a few more layouts that you get with Zorin OS Pro. If you're interested in doing that, you'll find my affiliate link in the description. Next, we'll go on to theme. We've already touched on this by setting dark mode earlier. Thank goodness for my sensitive eyeballs. But you can also set this to a lighter um, theme or you can have one that's automatic that is light in the morning and dark at night You can also pick between the colors If any one of these are your favorite colors, you can go ahead and pick them and you can theme it that way I like blue so I'm gonna stick with blue You can also do other Things with the appearance like theme your applications based on a few different options here as well as your icons and your cursor you're welcome to go and explore those at your leisure. There's also a nice section here called effects. You have your standard animations like moving between these desktops over here and having these things animated as you open windows, etc. If you want this to be more optimized, you can switch that off if you're not really too much of a fan of the animations. But you can also beef up the animations if you are. If we click jelly mode here, we can get this window here to dance with Larry over here and if we do that with Larry, then he's double dancing. So he's really enjoying it now. There's also this effect here, which is quite cool. If we use Control Alt and Left and Right, we can switch between these desktops. But if we do this with a cube, cube, sorry, I got Kubernetes on the brain clear, clearly. If we do this with a cube, <laughs> and I switch this on over here, you'll see that effect kind of looks like I'm on a cube here. And if I do that with the Activities Overview activated, you can see that's an even more exaggerated effect. You can also see we have this thing about the Spatial Window Switcher. 
Now, I'm gonna show you an example of what switching windows looks like here before we enable this and see what the difference looks like. You got this really cool effect when you're switching between the windows. Now, if you like all that stuff, you're welcome to enable them. I'm just gonna disable them for now. You can also choose if you want to display icons on the desktop, like the home, trash, amounts of volumes, separate servers, etc, etc, etc. If you really want to, you can also switch them all off and switch off all the icons entirely if you prefer. There are also other settings here that you're welcome to, welcome to explore at your leisure. There's ones where you can control the window placement, what the window action keys do, and there's a whole bunch of other settings. Like I said, you can go through them. We're going to move on to the taskbar, which also has some customization settings that you can go through. You'll see you have this panel in IntelliHide, which means if I go and bring a window here close to this taskbar, it's going to intelligently sense when it needs to disappear. And you'll see it's floating here. It looks a bit different now. Why is that? Because here in this cog, we have the floating rounded theme, which we can switch off or switch back on. And there's many other settings here that involve this little taskbar when it's got the IntelliHide setting activated. So you can also go ahead and explore those at your leisure. For now, we're going to disable that. You can also go over the position of the taskbar. It can be at the bottom, you can have it at the top, left, right, whatever is your preference. You can also change its thickness and the panel length. It all really depends on what you want, but there's a whole bunch of customization that you can have here. You can even work on the behavior, like showing your favorite applications, showing running applications, showing the notification counter badge, showing tooltips on the toolbar, and window previews on hover. For instance, so if you were doing this, if you did a window preview, if you switch that off, you wouldn't get a preview. And you can customize all of these different settings. And there's some more settings here where you can do the click actions for the taskbar and there's many other settings which you can also go through at your leisure. We won't cover everything, just the really cool stuff for now. So we're going to our standard settings here. There's a lot of things that you can configure on Zorin OS. You can configure your Wi-Fi, which is pretty simple. You just click on your Wi-Fi network, enter your password. The standard procedure is pretty easy to figure out. And there are other settings for network, for Bluetooth. You can change your background. They've got a few standard backgrounds here you can pick from, how notifications are displayed, your multitasking settings. Um, there's quite a few settings here. You can even specify some accounts. You'll notice you can have all the standard stuff here and even enterprise login. This is Kerberos. So if you're not too familiar with what Kerberos is, this is something that Windows computers use to authenticate to a domain on a corporate network, for instance. So now you can use that same functionality, but do this on a Linux machine. So it's really, really going into the depth of emulating Windows here. You can see you even have things like Microsoft Exchange. Here in the sharing section, if I go into this, you'll see it's, note, it's noting that it wants to create keyring. This is sort of similar to the keyring that you would get with Mac OS. It's just creating a keyring that it can store all of our passwords in when we're using the system. If you switch to sharing on, you can do things like remote desktop. If you switch remote desktop on, you can access this machine remotely the same you would any Windows machine. It'll even give you that certificate warning that you usually get with the Windows machine when you don't trust the certificate. You can enable remote control. You can enable the legacy VNC protocol to also access machine, this machine over VNC. And there are many other settings where you can get really specific about how you allow things to connect to you. But we'll switch that all off for now. You can also do media sharing to share folders on your device over SMB, for instance. And you can enable this for certain networks, like if I want to do this for my Wi-Fi here, for Ninja, I could do that as well. You also have sound settings. And all of this stuff is pretty easy to configure. Even your displays, all your standard settings are here and they make it pretty easy to work through all of these different settings. So now, let's get on to the next point. How do you go ahead and install software here? Now, on most operating systems, you might, well, at least most Linux operating systems, you might 
expect that you would have to use the terminal to install software. While that's not always the case, even Ubuntu has a software center like this. Zorin OS is no different. You can just install anything you want from Zorin OS's software center. We actually have a built-in email client here. So if you want to use emails, you can use Evolution, which isn't that bad of a email client. I myself prefer Mailspring, so I would suggest that you just use that. I'm going to go ahead and install Mailspring here. And while that's installing, I'm also going to install some other software, because I want an email client like Mailspring, you can see it looks quite nice here. I also want some Office software. If you type in Word, it's going to realize that you're looking for something that is kind of like Microsoft Word, which in this case would be LibreOffice Writer. LibreOffice is not actually that bad of a Office software, it's just not my favorite. So while it is pretty good and if you want to use this and you're not um, too bothered about using the standard thing that they offer, you can go ahead and do that. But I'm going to recommend that you use only Office. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and install this as well. Okay, so there was a whole bunch of boring installing happening, which I'm done with now. You're welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started with Mailspring here. Mailspring is quick and easy to get started with, uh, at least for the Gmail portion. So if you click get started here and you go past all of this welcome stuff, first it's going to ask you to create a Mailspring ID, which you're allowed to skip for now. Then you can skip that and you can go ahead and you can start with the Gmail or G Suite. Now if you sign in with your browser here, you can go ahead and sign in your Gmail account. I'm going to use my crispy fish check over here. Because obviously I don't want you to see my real emails, do I? Type in the password here. Yep, always click never save. Do not save your passwords in your browser. Hopefully I do not have to tell you that and I'm just telling you something very, very obvious. After we go through this process of connecting to Google, it should tell you that you are ready to go by saying, welcome to Mailspring. So you say, looks good. And then we finish the setup. And you can see, you start out with this really, really nice looking interface. Got an inbox here, got your reading pane, just like the experience. And this comes with a whole bunch of themes as well, which I might show in a later video. Now that we've got email set up, let's go ahead and use only Office. So now only Office, the reason I prefer it is if you go into the document section here, this looks super duper similar to Microsoft Word. This is probably the closest I've seen that ever get to Microsoft Word on Linux. And it's got some other desktop editors as well that you can work through, like one for Excel. You can see this all looks pretty much similar. Crispy here, just a side note, if you're looking for a full installation of Zorin OS, go ahead and click the link in the top right hand corner to see that on DistroTube. He does a pretty great video on how to, from start to finish, get this installed. So now that you get the general idea of how to install software and use it on Zorin, you'll see that the process is pretty much the same. You bring up this little software center here and you can get different kinds of things. For instance, maybe you're not a fan of Firefox. You want to get something like Chrome. When you search for Chrome, you might only find the open source alternative here, Chromium, which you can download. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just the open source version. You can also download other types of popular so uh, software, such as like Discord. If you want Discord, that's also just a click away to install. I'll show previews here for all of these different types of software you can install. Even things like gaming can be done on Zorin OS as well. So you can go ahead and install the Steam Launcher. And you can use this to use Play on Linux to go ahead and play actual games on Linux. I've played titles like Counter-Strike on Linux before, but we can do a whole, the whole gaming on Linux in a separate video. Today we took a tour of Zorin OS. They have this free version and the educational version. 
but if you want to support them and the channel, you can get their pro version using my affiliate link in the description. That's all I have for you folks. I hope you really enjoyed that and until next time.